In statistics, a likelihood function is a function of the parameters of a statistical model. Likelihood functions play a key role in statistical inference, especially methods of estimating a parameter from a set of statistics. In informal contexts, likelihood is often used as a synonym for probability, but in statistical usage, a distinction is made depending on the roles of the outcome or parameter. Probability is used when describing a function of the outcome given a fixed parameter value. Likelihood is used when describing a function of a parameter given an outcome. Definition The likelihood of a set of parameter values, theta, given outcomes x, is equal to the probability of those observed outcomes given those parameter values, that is, the likelihood function is defined differently for discrete and continuous probability distributions. Discrete probability distribution Let x be a random variable with a discrete probability distribution p depending on a parameter theta. Then the function considered as a function of theta is called the likelihood function. Sometimes the probability on the value x of x for the parameter value theta is written as, often written as to emphasize that this differs from which is not a conditional probability. Because theta is a parameter and not a random variable, continuous probability distribution let x be a random variable with a continuous probability distribution with density function f depending on the parameter theta, then the function considered as a function of theta is called the likelihood function. Sometimes the density function for the value x of x for the parameter value theta is written as but should not be confused with which should not be considered a conditional probability density. For discussion about making inferences via likelihood functions, see the method of maximum likelihood and likelihood ratio testing. Log likelihood. For many applications, the natural logarithm of the likelihood function, called the log likelihood, is more convenient to work with because the logarithm is a monotonically increasing function. The logarithm of a function achieves its maximum value at the same point as the function itself, and hence the log likelihood can be used in place of the likelihood in maximum likelihood estimation and related techniques. Finding the maximum of a function often involves taking the derivative of a function and solving for the parameter being maximized. And this is often easier when the function being maximized is a log likelihood rather than the original likelihood function. For example, some likelihood functions are for the parameters that explain a collection of statistically independent observations. In such a situation, the likelihood function factors into a product of individual likelihood functions. The logarithm of this product is a sum of individual logarithms and the derivative of a sum of terms is often easier to compute than the derivative of a product. In addition, several common distributions have likelihood functions that contain products of factors involving exponentiation. The logarithm of such a function is a sum of products, again easier to differentiate than the original function. Edwards established the axiomatic basis for use of the log likelihood ratio as a measure of relative support for one hypothesis against another. The support function is then the natural logarithm of the likelihood function. Both terms are used in phylogenetics but were not adopted in a general treatment of the topic of statistical evidence. Example, the gamma distribution. The gamma distribution has two parameters alpha and beta. The likelihood function is Finding the maximum likelihood estimate of beta for a single observed value x looks rather daunting. Its logarithm is much simpler to work with. Maximizing the log likelihood first requires taking the partial derivative with respect to beta. If there are a number of independent observations x1, xn, then the joint log likelihood will be the sum of individual log likelihoods and the derivative of this sum will be a sum of derivatives of each individual log likelihood. To complete the maximization procedure for the joint log likelihood, the equation is set to zero and solved for beta. Here denotes the maximum likelihood estimate, and is the sample mean of the observations.
likelihood function of a parameterized model. Among many applications, we consider here one of broad theoretical and practical importance. Given a parameterized family of probability density functions where theta is the parameter, the likelihood function is written where x is the observed outcome of an experiment. In other words, when f is viewed as a function of x with theta fixed, it is a probability density function, and when viewed as a function of theta with x fixed, it is a likelihood function. This is not the same as the probability that those parameters are the right ones, given the observed sample. Attempting to interpret the likelihood of a hypothesis given observed evidence as the probability of the hypothesis is a common error, with potentially disastrous consequences in medicine, engineering or jurisprudence. See prosecutor's fallacy for an example of this. From a geometric standpoint, if we consider f as a function of two variables then the family of probability distributions can be viewed as the family of curves parallel to the x-axis, while the family of likelihood functions are the orthogonal curves parallel to the theta axis. Likelihoods for continuous distributions The use of the probability density instead of a probability in specifying the likelihood function above may be justified in a simple way. Suppose that, instead of an exact observation x, the observation is the value in a short interval with length delta j, where the subscripts refer to a predefined set of intervals then the probability of getting this observation is approximately where x asterisk can be any point in interval j. Then, recalling that the likelihood function is defined up to a multiplicative constant, it is just as valid to say that the likelihood function is approximately, and then, on considering the lengths of the intervals to decrease to zero, likelihoods for mixed continuous discrete distributions the above can be extended in a simple way to allow consideration of distributions which contain both discrete and continuous components. Suppose that the distribution consists of a number of discrete probability masses pk and a density f, where the sum of all the p's added to the integral of f is always 1. Assuming that it is possible to distinguish an observation corresponding to one of the discrete probability masses from one which corresponds to the density component. The likelihood function for an observation from the continuous component can be dealt with as above by setting the interval length short enough to exclude any of the discrete masses. For an observation from the discrete component, the probability can either be written down directly or treated within the above context by saying that the probability of getting an observation in an interval that does contain a discrete component is approximately where can be any point in interval j. Then, on considering the lengths of the intervals to decrease to zero, the likelihood function for an observation from the discrete component is where k is the index of the discrete probability mass corresponding to observation x. The fact that the likelihood function can be defined in a way that includes contributions that are not commensurate arises from the way in which the likelihood function is defined up to a constant of proportionality where this constant can change with the observation x but not with the parameter theta. Example 1. Let be the probability that a certain coin lands heads up when tossed. So, the probability of getting two heads in two tosses is, if, then the probability of seeing two heads is 0.25. Another way of saying this is that the likelihood that, given the observation hh, is 0.25, that is but this is not the same as saying that the probability that, given the observation hh, is 0.25. The probability of observing HH, given that, is 1, but it is not true that the probability that, given the observation HH, is 1. Two heads in a row does not prove that the coin always comes up heads because two heads in a row is possible for any. The likelihood function is not a probability density function. The integral of a likelihood function is not in general one. In this example, the integral of the likelihood over the interval 0, 1, in is one-third. 
demonstrating that the likelihood function cannot be interpreted as a probability density function for example 2. Consider a jar containing n lottery tickets numbered from 1 through n. If you pick the ticket randomly then you get positive integer n with probability 1, n if n n and with probability 0 if n greater than n. This can be written where the Iverson bracket n n is 1 when n n and 0 otherwise. When considered a function of n for fixed n this is the probability distribution. But when considered a function of n for fixed n this is a likelihood function. The maximum likelihood estimate for n is n0 equals n. This likelihood function is not a probability distribution, because the total is a divergent series. Suppose, however, that you pick two tickets rather than one. The probability of the outcome n1, n2, where n1 less than n2, is when considered a function of n for fix n2. This is a likelihood function. The maximum likelihood estimate for n is n0 equals n2. This time the total is a convergent series, and so this likelihood function can be normalized into a probability distribution. If you pick three or more tickets, the likelihood function has a well-defined mean value, which is larger than the maximum likelihood estimate. If you pick four or more tickets, the likelihood function has a well-defined standard deviation to relative likelihood. Relative likelihood function suppose that the maximum likelihood estimate for theta is relative plausibilities of other theta values may be found by comparing the likelihood of those other values with the likelihood of the relative likelihood of theta is defined as a 10% likelihood region for theta is and more generally a p% likelihood region for theta is defined to be if theta is a single real parameter. A p% likelihood region will typically comprise an interval of real values. In that case, the region is called a likelihood interval. Likelihood intervals can be compared to confidence intervals. If theta is a single real parameter, then under certain conditions, a 14.7% likelihood interval for theta will be the same as a 95% confidence interval. In a slightly different formulation suited to the use of log likelihoods, the test statistic is twice the difference in log likelihoods and the probability distribution of the test statistic is approximately a chi-squared distribution with degrees of freedom equal to the difference in DFS between the two models. The idea of basing an interval estimate on the relative likelihood goes back to Fisher in 1956 and has been used by many authors since then. A likelihood interval can be used without claiming any particular coverage probability. As such, it differs from confidence intervals. Relative likelihood of models The definition of relative likelihood can be generalized to compare different statistical models. This generalization is based on AIC, or sometimes AICC. Suppose that, for some data set, we have two statistical models, M1 and M2. Also suppose that AIC AIC. Then the relative likelihood of M2 with respect to M1 is defined to be EXP minus AIC 2 to see that this is a generalization of the earlier definition. Suppose that we have some model M with the parameter theta. Then for any theta, set M2 equals M and also set M1 equals M of interest. The main approach is being marginal, conditional and profile likelihoods. These approaches are useful because standard likelihood methods can become unreliable or fail entirely when there are many nuisance parameters or when the nuisance parameters are high dimensional. This is particularly true when the nuisance parameters can be considered to be missing data. They represent a non-negligible fraction of the number of observations and this fraction does not decrease when the sample size increases. Often these approaches can be used to derive closed form formulae for statistical tests when direct use of maximum likelihood requires iterative numerical methods. These approaches find application in some specialized topics such as sequential analysis.
conditional likelihood sometimes it is possible to find a sufficient statistic for the nuisance parameters, and conditioning on this statistic results in a likelihood which does not depend on the nuisance parameters. One example occurs in 2 times 2 tables where conditioning on all four marginal totals leads to a conditional likelihood based on the non-central hypergeometric distribution. This form of conditioning is also the basis for Fisher's exact test. Marginal likelihood Sometimes we can remove the nuisance parameters by considering a likelihood based on only part of the information in the data. For example by using the set of ranks rather than the numerical values. Another example occurs in linear mixed models, where considering a likelihood for the residuals only after fitting the fixed effects leads to residual maximum likelihood estimation of the variance, components, profile likelihood when the likelihood function depends on many parameters, depending on the application. We might be interested in only a subset of these parameters. It is often possible to reduce the number of the uninteresting parameters by writing them as functions of the parameters of interest. For example, the functions might be the value of the nuisance parameter which maximizes the likelihood given the value of the other parameters. This procedure is called concentration of the parameters and results in the concentrated likelihood function, also occasionally known as the maximized likelihood function, but most often called the profile likelihood function. It is then possible to find the values of the parameters which maximizes the profile likelihood function for example. Consider a regression analysis model with normally distributed errors. The most likely value of the error variance is the variance of the residuals. The residuals depend on all other parameters. Hence the variance parameter can be written as a function of the other parameters. Unlike conditional and marginal likelihoods, profile likelihood methods can always be used, even when the profile likelihood cannot be written down explicitly. However, the profile likelihood is not a true likelihood, as it is not based directly on a probability distribution. And this leads to some less satisfactory properties. Attempts have been made to improve this, resulting in modified profile likelihood. The idea of profile likelihood can also be used to compute confidence intervals that often have better small sample properties than those based on asymptotic standard errors calculated from the full likelihood. In the case of parameter estimation in partially observed systems, the profile likelihood can be also used for identifiability analysis. Results from profile likelihood analysis can be incorporated in uncertainty analysis of model predictions. Partial likelihood A partial likelihood is a factor component of the likelihood function that isolates the parameters of interest. It is a key component of the proportional hazards model. 